In this video, we're going to take a look at the configuration of vCenter Update Manager. So we installed it in a previous video. I didn't actually have it configured with internet access and all of those things. So at various points, it was complaining to me. So there's a couple of scheduled tasks that I had actually gone in and removed. So those would have shown up in here if I'd just gone to scheduled tasks, I would have seen a couple of vCenter Update Manager processes for downloading the latest updates and so on. But other than that, I actually didn't see anything related to, and you don't see anything here related to vCenter Update Manager until we install the plugin. So everyone using the vSphere client, now that there's new functionality available on the vCenter server, needs to add the plugin. I would like it if that happened automatically. As of now, it doesn't. So I'm going to go to the plugins menu and I'm going to say manage plugins. And we see that we actually do have the vSphere Update Manager plugin available and I can download and install it and get it integrated into my client. Just confirms whether I want to run it or not. Now that we've got the VUM plugin installed, we'll see down at the bottom of our homepage, we actually see a solutions and applications section now and update managers listed. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on that. And you'll see we've got a standard getting started page and it gives us a couple of links here for what we need to do. I'm just going to go ahead and close that and we'll do it the hard way, which is not that hard. In standard configuration, I've got some network connectivity details and it says, you know, the client needs to be able to communicate with the update manager server. That's fine. My update manager is installed on my vCenter. If we take a look over to download settings, we can see which products it is going to get. Not much we can do for that in terms of download source and so on from here. But if we click over to add download source, we can add additional ones. You could potentially add your own custom sources, or if you're going to mirror that internally, you could add your own custom sources. And there's also this option, use a shared repository. This is probably the easiest way to go about having multiple VUM servers get their patches from one specific location. But notice there's also this option, import patches from a local zip file. So if your VUM server is not connected, we can do an import that way, or if it is connected to the internet, but it needs to log into a proxy, we can specify the proxy and we can specify how it should log into it. And then if we take a look at download schedule, we can edit the download schedule here and specify when we want this to be done. And this will just go back and modify the existing scheduled task. We also have the notification check schedule, which will just go back and modify that scheduled task. And then we can see we've got some specific details on how we want to handle the virtual machines Let's take a look at the ESX host and cluster settings because this is quite interesting, especially if you're using DRS or HA. What we're going to do before we attempt to patch a host is put it in maintenance mode so we can specify how that should happen. If that host is part of a DRS cluster and that DRS cluster is set for fully automated mode, then the machines that are vMotion capable will automatically get migrated, so long as there's nothing preventing them from being migrated, like devices that shouldn't be connected from local data stores and so on or other local USB devices, things like that, then they'll just evacuate the node. But if there's local only, or there's any virtual machines that are tied to that host for some reason, CPU affinity or something like that, then we can say what should happen to them. We also have the option to retry getting into maintenance mode in case there was any problems doing that. And we can also see during the cluster, when we start doing rolling updates of the cluster, if I have a whole series of hosts, basically what it's gonna do is it's gonna to go to the first host, put in maintenance mode, Hopefully DRS is then going to evacuate the workload, and then we can go ahead and install the patches, have the machine reboot itself, come back up, take it out of maintenance mode, and then bring a workload back to it. We can do things such as turning off HA admission control, where normally we might not want to allow failures of the nodes. If it's going to be a problem for you when you lose one host due to patching, what happens when you lose one host in production? So you should probably look at your cluster and see why you need to do these things. For example, distributed power management, where it's going to potentially start waking up machines or putting machines to sleep, we don't necessarily want to do fault tolerance. We have to be a little bit careful. And notice it says all the hosts in the cluster should be updated at the same time to make sure fault tolerance will work and so on. So we can turn off some of these features temporarily, proceed carefully, and take a look at VMware's documentation for all the details. And also, by default, only do one host in a cluster at a time. If you've got a two-node, four-node, six-node cluster, it's probably a good idea. So we might want to actually do parallel remediation and allow it to do multiple hosts at once. For Pixie booted hosts, there's an option to allow extra software to be installed. So this is all fairly straightforward stuff. It's just a question of, again, whether we want to play it a little bit safe by temporarily turning off some of the cluster features just to make sure. You're definitely going to want to go through and manually test all of these sorts of issues. That gives us the basic configuration of VUM. 
In the next videos, we're going to take a look at reviewing the patch repository and seeing what's been downloaded. And we'll also take a look at baselines and baseline groups.